Okay, in the last video, I showed you how to cover, how to make your covers, how to use the paste paper, and how to wrap it around cardboard. So as you can see, mine are nice and dry now, so I can work with them. And just to give you a preview of where we're going, we're gonna work on the binding part now, which is a two-part process. First part is we have to drill the holes, and then the second part is we sew it with our binding fibers. And then we have our nice, beautiful hardback book. So um, I'm going to um, uh, ask you to stand up so you can look down at this. Um, so here's my, my covers. This is the inside of them. You need to make sure that you're really careful when you put your materials in it, that everything is right side up in the right order and all held together. Otherwise your book will look kind of messy. I'm using a fly sheet for this one. Um, I explained in my lecture, a fly sheet is a piece of colored or decorative paper that's merely added um, as a little decorative feature. Originally back in the Renaissance, they were put there to keep the ink from smearing. And I've got one on the back also. So I just use construction paper and I cut it slightly bigger than my pages. Now I went through all my pages. I already did this. I made sure I had, let me just check real quick. And I want to goof up. I got all my pages are upright and in the right order. Okay. My book has very, very thick, heavy paper. So I think when you have heavy paper, it's kind of nice to pre-fold the pages where the hinge is gonna go because then that makes it easier for the child to turn the pages. If you don't do that, they can be a little bit stiff. If your paper is thin or kind of flimsy, you don't have to do that step. So, I'm gonna put the, put the fly sheet down. You want everything to be flush with this edge, the edge that you're gonna bind. Think of it as kind of like right justified. And then I wanna make sure that up and down, it's equally spaced. I don't want it too high or too low. This is kind of a nerve wracking part, I think, because if you goof up here, it's a goof. <laughs> so all my pages that I checked and double checked are in the right order and right side up, because I have made books where I've got like one page upside down or something. It's really hard to fix if you goof up. Get all my pages lined up. And again, there it's right justified because this is where my binding's gonna be. And if I don't have it right up against this edge, it won't get caught in the stitches and the pages will fall out. Now, it's kind of like a deck of house of cards almost. Now the other um, fly sheet, putting it right on top. And here comes the cover. Yeah. Let's see how that's hanging out a little bit. Make sure that my covers are parallel to each other and lined up. Now, I think I got it in place. I've got two of these huge clips. I'm going to put these on it so that nothing moves while I'm binding it because things move out of place. Just imagine if one page moves half an inch, now your whole book's kind of weird looking. So that's now clipped into place. Now I already, with the ruler, I predetermined where I wanted my holes to be. In this case, I have seven holes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Traditionally with Japanese book binding, this is a Japanese process that we're doing. You use an odd number of holes. So you want to put an odd number of holes. I used a ruler to space them out from top to bottom. Um, it's better if you look at that. I spaced them out from top to bottom and they're equally in the middle of the hinge. Remember that cardboard hinge. They're not, if they're too close to the edge, that's not going to be good. But if they're too far in, that's not good. So Aim for the middle. If you don't hit it exactly, that's fine. It's also kind of good to have them all in a straight line because if they're crooked, it's going to show up. Now, 
I'm going to drill. I've got a drill bit that's kind of big here and it might even be a little too big. I'm not sure, but I decided for my binding, I'm going to use two pieces of skinny ribbon and your needle's going to go through each hole three times. So it needs to be a pretty good size hole. I've had students start to make the book and then the needle won't go through the hole. So give some thought. If you want to do a practice on a piece of cardboard, you could practice like that. Um, let's see. Let's do that just to support it a little bit while I'm drilling. Okay, when you drill, you want to put your drill bit on the hole that you did. You want to go straight down at a straight 90 degree angle. If you have a little crooked or a little bit over here, it won't work. You have to go straight down. Now I'm just going to drill down till I hear this. Two, if I hit this two by four, I know I've gone far enough that I'm going to pull it straight out. You can see the hole and it went through to the other side. It might be better to do it from the back. Then you don't get these little loose bits, but I don't care. It's fine. Drill bit came out. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> That's how you drill it. <laughs> okay. Let's stop it right now.